morning, everybody. Do me a favor right now, turn to your neighbor and say good morning. We all have to wake up. This is a sleepy group. Good morning. Okay, great. Great. We are glad that you are here to worship with us. We welcome those of you on YouTube who have tur turned on the, the TV for worship. We're glad that you are with us. We welcome you and glad that you are connecting in this way, whether on vacation or wherever you might be. We also just want to remind you that we are dependent on, on, on our offerings that come in uh, for our uh, ability to carry out our mission, which is to share Christ, serve community, and grow disciples. So. Welcome to everybody. Glad that you are here. Let's put the first announcement on the screen, which has to do with our back to school bash. And this is one of our bigger uh, outreach events as a congregation uh, we, as we partner with Parkwood Schools and uh, Parkwood Elementary School. And uh, um, a lot of teachers last year shared with us how great it was to meet their class, uh, uh, people in their class the week the day before this all starts, school starts, uh, here on a neutral ground and a fun atmosphere. And so this is a great mission that we, we do. And I want to share with you some of our leaders who did it last year are unable to do it this year. So we need people to volunteer to be a part of uh, and come to a meeting. If you come to a meeting, you're not going to run it all. We, we, we've got enough uh, other leaders, but we need people to come and take parts, little pieces of this event. And so we're going to gather on Monday, June 19th uh, at 6.30 in Holy Grounds on that Monday to talk about this. If you have any time or any ability, and even if you just want to help with the bash and don't know how to help, come and give us ideas. We're going to talk about it each year. It's a little different. Last year we combined it with the, the pig roast. We're probably doing that this year, but that's where all that decision is going to be made. So we invite you to come and to be a part of it. Next, we celebrate our graduates. Do we have graduates who are in the audience here today? In the, in, it's, okay, we have one, okay, and uh, we celebrate. We celebrate your graduation with you. Uh, please make sure after worship to notice on any of the three screens upstairs, these up here and the ones out in the narthex, notice those who have graduated, and if you see any of them, shake their hand, okay, and congratulate them. We're, it's a great achievement uh, for graduation. This is at numerous levels, not just high school, but also college and graduate school and others. Want to lift up another event and invite all of you to come to a picnic. How many of you like picnics, right? Yeah, so we have a picnic on Monday, June 26, with Spoke Folk, which are youth that uh, travel from church to church on their bikes and they have a whole concert they wanna do for us. So it sounds like a very fun night. If you're willing to be a part of it, please sign up on the I Worship today and bring your favorite, uh, I don't know, pickled herring. I don't know, whatever you bring to, uh, I try to choose something very weird, Pastor Gary. Don't bring pickled herring, I don't wanna eat it. But you're, I got you awake, I tell you, it's a sleepy morning. We're glad that you are here. Make sure you sign up and come and participate. Uh, our, we've, we announced uh, earlier in May kind of the challenge, the time of year we are in our, in our life of our church as we change from a building program to a mortgage. And we explained all of that. Doug did a great job of that. And uh, here's, here's our president, uh, Becky uh, sharing what her family is going to do uh, because of this. So if you would watch, I invite you to watch. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Burdick, Church Council President, and you've heard from Doug about how weekly giving does tend to slow down in the summer months. So I wanted to share how my family is ensuring that we are giving consistently throughout the year every week, week to week. Uh, with three busy kids, we have quite the schedule to juggle. So when I figured out that we could do automatic giving through Simply Giving on the website and set it up so that there are regular uh, weekly amounts given to the church, even if we are not here uh, at service because of schedules, especially in the summer or if someone's sick, um, 
I was really happy to have that happen because it does mean that it's automatically withdrawing and that we are making sure that our contribution is consistent week over week. So if you haven't looked into this option, I definitely recommend taking a look at the website. There's a link to Simply Giving, giving right on the website. Um, it's just an initial setup, and then you only ever have to go back in and make a change if you want to, um, or if you want to make any adjustments to the schedule that you have set up or the amount. Um, of course, if you have any questions or need assistance uh, with the site or the link, please contact the church office or anyone on council would be happy to help as well. So as always, thank you for all that you continue to do to support our missions here at Peace. Thank you. Is a sheet in there, there should be a sheet in there that talks about electronic giving to help you with that. If you wanna do that, we invite you to do that. Um, and if you need help, please feel free to ask for help and you uh, ask the office and we will we will uh, find folks who can help you. So we want to lift that up. I'm going to invite you to stand at this point. One piece of people news as you stand. This Monday we have our Vacation Bible School and Pastor Kerry is very excited to lead that, right? Okay. Let's pass the peace right now to those who are gathered there. Peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pass the peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace. Peace. join in our call to worship. Gracious is our God and great is Jesus' compassion. Tax collectors, religious leaders, the poor and the needy come to him for aid. Jesus meets them where they are with love and grace. Great is your compassion and provision to us, Lord and Jesus. Today we worship you. Let us join in our hymn of praise. There's no greater love than Jesus. There's no greater love than he gives. There's no greater love that frees us so deep within. There's no greater joy than Jesus. There's no greater joy than he gives. There's no greater joy that frees us so deep within. We praise your
with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our readings for today. The first reading is from the book of Hosea, chapter 5, and also some in chapter 6. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their sin and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg for my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He has struck down and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will rise us up so that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn, and he will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like the morning cloud, and that the dew goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them from the pop, by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my, wall, my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as a light. For I desire steadfast love, not the sacrifice, the knowledge of God, rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 4. The promise that he would inherit, inherit the word did not come, from, come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, the faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be granted to, the, to all his descendants, not only to adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, believe that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall be your descendants be. He will not weaken in faith when he's considered his body his own body, which is already as good as dead, for he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him in righteousness, in other words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Be Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? 
you have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Matthew's Gospel, the ninth chapter. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying this, these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has died, but come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. And as Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples, then suddenly a woman, who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If only I touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players of the crowd making commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. When the crowd had been outside, he went in, took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. The gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Jimmy Carter writes about a group of Christian laymen involved in missionary work who approached a small village near an Amish settlement. Seeking a possible convert, they confronted an Amish farmer and asked him, Brother, are you a Christian? The farmer thought for a moment and then said, Wait for a minute. He then went and found a piece of paper and wrote down a list of names and handed it to the lay evangelists. Here, he said, here is a list of people who know me best. Please ask them if I am a Christian. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian faith calls us to behaviors with others that goes way beyond liking them. Respect for each person we meet carries us beyond liking others. Respect is an interesting word. I've shared this before in, my te in teaching and in preaching, but the etymology of that word is very simple. It's made up of two words. The last part is spect, like spectacles, which means to look. And the first part of the word is re, which means again. So simply it means to look again. In other words, to not make an instant judgment and live on that judgment in your mind, but actually to look again at that person. To look again and again and again is to live respect. In our text today, we see a mosaic of Jesus giving respect to all he comes across. And he was meeting people right where they are, right where they lived. In the very first encounter, Jesus passes by Matthew, which while he was doing business at the tax table, in the, third, in the second meeting, Jesus is confronted by the religious purists of his age, and he meets their challenge with both respect and crystal clarity of his purpose. Then he has an encounter within an encounter. 
while responding to the leader of, a, of the synagogue. He then heals a woman with 12 year medical problem of hemorrhaging and in each case planned or by chance, Jesus responds respectfully. Jesus demonstrates for us God's value of each and every living person. In Matthew's case, he was a tax collector and therefore in the league with the oppressor of evil Rome, if you will. Tax collectors not only collected the tax for Rome, but they had the opportunity to add whatever percent they wanted to on top of that tax bill in collecting it. And so you can imagine, tax collectors were not thought of well, in fact, were social outcasts, yet Jesus respects him and calls him. Next, we see Jesus confronted by the Pharisees, respect, and he respectfully turns their self-righteousness right up on its head, declaring that God prefer, prefers mercy, justice with compassion, and rather than their idol worship. Then he looks past the wealth and the prestige of the synagogue leader and responds to his heartfelt need. And this is precisely what he will do also for the woman with a flow of blood because her malady was a hemorrhage. She would have been shunned by her own family and friends at, according to the Levitical law about the flow of blood. And so Jesus also looks past her social station and loves her. Here's the piece of good news we find in all of this today. No matter where we are in this spiritual journey we call life, God will meet us there. Seeing beyond our stations in life, Jesus offers respect to each person in the name of God. Tax collectors, Pharisees, followers, and opponents are met with the same discerning love of God in, G in Jesus of Nazareth, which is a respectful of all. Community leaders, social misfits, all receive the healing attention of God in the Savior Jesus. You see, when Jesus is present in how we greet others, we show that same respect to those closest to us as well as those we might not even know or like. So let me ask, if you had to give a list of names of those who know you best, would they be able to testify to your faith as a Christian? Now I hasten to add that we, we are not talking about perfection here. If that were possible, we would not need a savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God can enter our lives and can use us to show God's love in action to those around us. Baseball umpire Durwood Merrill tells of his rookie year umping in the major league. It was his first game behind the plate with fastball pitcher Nolan Ryan who was known for the speed he could throw a baseball. You all know Nolan Ryan, Ryan, raise your hand. You know Nolan Ryan, okay? And so he was pitching this game. The second pitch of the game was so fast, Merrill never saw it. He froze, unable to make a call. Finally, he yelled, strike. At which point the batter backed out of the batter's box and said, um, don't feel bad, I didn't see it either. <laughs> God's love in action through us is demonstrated in what I'd like to call non-toxic service. The problem with most of us when we compare our lives with that of our Savior is that we, we have a, our perfection lenses on, if you will. We see, in other words, we see Jesus as unrealistically sweet and ourselves as uncharacteristically fallen. And so hearing about love in action 
seems to be a demand, as we might hear it, for many of us that, to doing something that's unachievable, some unachievable self-sacrifice or giving. You see, we experience, we experience our lives as moving at the speed of that invisible fastball from Nolan Ryan. We don't know how we can respond to this call and keep it up. The answer is simple, we can't. The call to non-toxic service is to care for the other. That's what it's all about. We cannot care for anyone and keep up the breath, neck, fast pace of our life. Caring for others requires us to slow down. What it does not demand, and I want to be clear about this, what this kind of non-toxic service does not demand is that we offer ourselves up as a sacrificial lamb to anyone at any time for any service. Jesus, notice in our text today, Jesus says yes to those he meets. Three out of four encounters in our text. He says no to the Pharisees. Non-toxic Christian service says no so that we can slow down, find balance, and even say yes. This means caring for oneself as well as caring for the other. Caring for ourselves means taking responsibility for our own health and our own needs. Here's the reality. You cannot give what you do not have, and if you are worn out, used up, traveling at the speed of light, you cannot give to anyone, even those you care the most about. Jesus cared for himself in our text today by calling Matthew to follow and to serve him by choosing not to get engulfed in the religious perfection of the Pharisees and by not being forced to choose between a religious leader and an outcast woman. We care for ourselves when we live a both-and world, both effective, respectful, caring for others, as well as our own self-care. <coughs> This means what I'd like to call seeing the particular. That is, putting the demands and the encounters in our lives in perspective with everything else going on in our lives. We see each day and each encounter as a particular moment, not life demanding, that we are saying, stating no, but rather saying yes, when we understand that difference. For example, when your boss tells you to do something which, you, which will prove that you are loyal, but you, you know is unethical, seeing, seeing the particular means that you choose to allow this wrong action to define yourself or your appropriate loyalty, which you're going to choose. Or when that victim-playing person in your life calls yet again, to demand more and more of your time and your emotions that you know are inappropriate, saying no means understanding that this particular occasion will not define you as an uncaring person. Jesus says it this way in our gospel today. He says to the Pharisees, he says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Mercy, in the scriptures, is always a two-sided coin. On one side, compassion, self-giving service. But on the other side is justice, balancing the needs and desires of others against the good of our, for ourselves and for our community. And so justice and compassion intersect at that point where we respect others and ourselves. Beloved people of God, despising no one means treating others with a respect which reflects God's valuing of all people. 
The pastor shook, the pastor's hand shook. He was not nervous, he was angry. He had been bringing Holy Communion to this member of the congregation for weeks, but this seemed almost too much to bear. This member had always had difficulty. He had arrived, he would arrive late to church, unkempt, unwashed, even smelly, so that those with whom he would sit couldn't move away. Then this man became sick, and the pastor had to come at his request to find him in his messy house, in his dirty underwear. But now, but now, because it was hot, he had said, hot, because it was hot that he said, the pastor was serving the Lord's Supper to this demanding man who had not a stitch of clothing on. His hand shook at the indignity of of it all, the excessive demands of it. Only a few days later, this Lutheran pastor received a call that this demanding and difficult man whom he had been seeing for weeks had died. The pastor hung up the phone. He sighed. Then he began to weep, and his weeping turned into sobbing. Now, in telling his story to Tony Campolo, this pastor said that it was then that he realized that he had come to love this demanding man. His acts of service, as begrudging as they were, had created something alive, something powerful within him. Love had replaced, had replaced despising. The values of God, people of God, are laughable. Did you hear in the text how they laughed at Jesus when he told them the girl was not dead but only sleeping? Did you hear that? You see, the values of God bring life out of death, see more than the obvious, and value people as cherished creations of hope and love. Our God delights in us, and not just us sitting in this room, but the us of all the people in the world. This is a God who can take Duties of obligation like serving a rude, cantankerous old man and transform them into love. This is a God who can simultaneously love the rich and the powerful as well as the hurting and the outcast. These are values at which the world scoffs. And yet these are the very values that transform lives and change the world one person at a time. The values of God are eternal. Today's hot commodity will become tomorrow's leftovers, and tomorrow's leftovers will become the days after antiques. Power and riches are historically the most transitory gifts, but serving God's people is valuing God's people. God's calls to us, to non-toxic service through the respect of others. And these values will last forever. What about you? What about you? Are you willing to align, realign your life to these values which are so eternal? Is there enough evidence in your life for those who know you and declare you a Christian? Has God transformed an obligation into life-giving purpose and love? Are you ready to put Jesus in the center of how you treat others? If so, I invite you to join me in a simple prayer. And if you're not ready, that's okay. Just let the words of this prayer pass you by. But if you are ready, repeat this prayer 
in the sanctity of your heart as I pray. So let all heads be bowed and let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, as you treated others with deep respect, even when they ridiculed and challenged you, so I would respect others in your name. Just as you took time to care for care of yourself, even as you reached out in loving service to others, help me to live that self-care and other care. Today I ask your Holy Spirit to empower me to love in action. And when I fail, Lift me up with your forgiveness. Grow within me eternal values to love and respect all I meet. In Jesus' name, and the whole church said, Amen. I'm going to invite us to stand at this time for our confession. Gracious God, because of your love and grace, we know that we can approach your throne. Ever-present God, at times we only think of ourselves. At times we don't connect in a kingdom way with our neighbor. There are times when we are gruff in our response to their needs. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to respond as Jesus would. Our loving God calls us, redeems us, and forgives us through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus for us. Go and live as Jesus would. Amen. Now we have a little change in service. The uh, screen, we're going to sing a different hymn. We're going to sing the old hymn that we all know. They will know uh, Christians by our love instead of the one that we had written down. So we invite you to re sing along with us.
trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Please be seated. We pray, O oh God, for the church. Unite us with any on the margins that the whole world recognizes that your mercy is greater than our human capacity to restrict it. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, O oh God, for creation. Tend forests and fields and safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans and send rains to water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Awaken in our leaders compassion for people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected. And inspire policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need. Accompany anyone enduring chronic illness and any who suffer in secret and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh God, for the eradication of racial hatred. On this week, when we commemorate the Emmanuel 9, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks, O oh God, for Barnabas and all the saints. Renew our faith that you can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved dead to new life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our church family and those we name aloud or silently in our hearts that all experience the healing and comfort given through Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome to come to the table. We encourage you at this time to take your I Worship Today sheet and your offering as you head into the narthex. There is sanitizer if you wish to sanitize your hands before coming back in to receive communion. Reminder, the brown chalice is grape juice. The blue chalices are wine. You may go.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strength and keep and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.